let's jump Anyways. into this recap. We got episodes mm-hmm. three and four to get through. Yes, we do. Ooh. Um. All right. So we back at Chris and Paige's wedding. Paige, mm-hmm. uh, Chris is waiting for Paige to come down the aisle. Mm-hmm. Again, his biggest fear is that she's going to be ugly. His words, not mine. <sighs> Jesus Lord. Um. So Paige comes around the corner. She has her dad and her stepdad. You know, yeah, she looks so beautiful in her little wedding dress. Mm-hmm. Chris whispers fuck to mm-hmm. himself. But he's smiling. Mm-hmm. But that was the first sign that we knew. Yeah, there was, was something wrong. not into it. Yeah. Something was wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Chris's trifling ass pastor is the officiant, which is... <sighs> I don't I want this guy anywhere near my wedding. <laughs> like, nowhere, nowhere, even it, near the church. No, nah, I don't even. He ain't marry me. Uh uh-uh. uh, no. Mm-mm. Um. So Paige's family and friends want him to know that she is Christ um, conscious. She's passionate. Mm-hmm. She's very intentional. You know all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Paige is a great woman. Yeah, she got her own she issues, is. but she, yeah, she's a very you know successful, great, grown, mature woman. Yep. Um, Chris's family and friends. He's a hard worker. Mm. He's building an empire. He likes nice things. Name <laughs> brand shoes. Luxury cars. <laughs> you should want for nothing. This is the this is the paragraph soliloquy that y'all are yeah. putting at his wedding to describe to his it. wife. This is He's a materialistic asshole. Yeah, Ferragamo <laughs> belts and uh, yeah. Lamborghinis. Yeah. Mm-hmm. oh my god yeah that's what you should expect want for nothing that, Paige yeah. you accountant mm-hmm. that's renting out the house you own yes want yeah. for nothing yes <laughs> <laughs> his priorities are allegedly God and family and he's open <laughs> to the idea of a honeymoon baby it's so which gross which they say at the altar the family put that in his fucking summary mad casual I don't why i don't know i i kept saying this i don't know why he just doesn't get some random person pregnant then i don't understand why he's here like <laughs> even for himself like I show know. aside like what what do you feel like you're missing out of the dating scene that you oh can't... he's here oh. to be on tv i think he really did want to make a church oh, yeah. with that pastor and like maybe yeah. a church car dealership hybrid i don't know <laughs> oh. <laughs> i i can't mm, mm, um mm. so yeah he gives some nice sounding vows and mm-hmm. you know they exchange rings and kiss and um even the kiss he was very hesitant he was trying to play it off I like oh, can i kiss you on, on the, the lips on the, lips, <laughs> on, the on the cheek um God. like just doing a whole lot for no reason yeah yeah um so they head off you know they walk down the aisle they head off and go get you know champagne and, and cheers mm-hmm. and he is already commenting in the confessional she has a very Mm -hmm. nice shape um he says you know she's beautiful her smile lights up the room lying you lying we know Mm -hmm. i'm attracted to her Mm -hmm. um she's all bubbly she shows him her infinity tattoo and Mm -hmm. you know she's you know trying to make connections or whatever um so yeah he asked her what she does she lets him know mm-hmm. she's an accountant and mm-hmm. flat out tells him your spending habits will be discussed because she definitely heard <laughs> about his nice Uh-oh. things and all that foolishness yep. mm-hmm. um and lest we forget that is, isn't financial differences like the number one cause of divorce in america probably i think so <laughs> damn <laughs> financial woes yeah yeah, yeah. damn um, so that's a whole other segment of their relationship. That's a fucking mess. <laughs> yeah, because honestly, like, I don't know. Maybe in Atlanta you can do this, but I just can't see how you can be homeless a year ago and then all of a sudden be into like designer shoes and making six figures. He says, "Yeah, um, but even making six figures, like for going from homelessness to like just going to the Neemans, that's like a really cool. large jump." Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Not to be counting anybody's money. I'm just confused as to how he he got there. But anyways, Chris, that's the least of my worries. That's that hood rich mentality. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So you just can't wait to... It's like trophies for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, teach their own. Yeah, it's a... It's, yeah. Yeah, it's a mentality for sure. Yeah, Um, it's a learned behavior. It's fine. Mm -hmm. so he you know she asks him what he does he's like you know i'm the Mm -hmm. youngest black franchise owner 
of a particular brand. Oh my no. god. <laughs> Just oh this my long winded way of saying he owns a subway. You own a subway? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Why is that a record? That you're the youngest black male owner of a subway restaurant? Does that matter? Does that matter in life? Do you think you're black history? It must be a big deal, I guess. I don't, oh my God. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he's proud. He's going to be closing on his first home next week. And Paige is like, oh, wow, I, I own a house that I'm currently mm-hmm. renting. Like, mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> just comes in smooth. Like, there shit ain't mm-hmm. nothing compared to what I'm doing over here. Today. Yep. Um, and then she notices a tattoo on his wrist. Mm-hmm. And it's like a King Jesus tattoo. I don't know what that means. And um, she's like, oh, that looks, it looks really fresh. And he's like, yeah, yeah I got it done three days ago. <laughs> so three days before our wedding, you were doing some impulsive ass <laughs> tattoo shit. Uh, what? It just keeps getting worse. He lets her know yep. that last year he and his ex got their names right. tatted on them. Yes. Before engagement. And Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. And yes, yes. he never got a chance to cover it up, so he yeah. ran to the tattoo yeah. parlor three days ago to get it ta- uh, covered up. Never got a chance to cover it up. Never got a chance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Next huge red flag, she asks him, do you like dogs? And he mm-hmm. goes, my ex had a dog. <laughs> Who cares? It's First of all, it seems like every single cast member has a dog but you, Chris. Everybody has a dog, <laughs> yeah, it seems like. And... And this is Ugh. the second mention of your ex in the past five minutes of marrying yeah. me. Yeah. Yep. Like, what? Yep, yep, yep. So, Paige, this is not lost on her. She mm-hmm. is, like, very disturbed, obviously. And she says yep. to him, like, are you still holding on to things? Like, are those doors closed? Like, mm-hmm. what's mm-hmm. going on? And then he drops the next bomb. I was I was actually engaged. <laughs> a couple of months but ago. We'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, a couple of months ago. And so she's just in her confessional, like, the, she claims this is not a huge red flag. This is a mm-hmm. yellow flag, as she calls it. Mm-hmm. To me, in this conversation alone, I've seen three red flags. The oh, tattoo, right. the dog comment, and mm-hmm. the fact that he was engaged. You have three I'm, red flags already in the first five minutes five minutes of marrying me. I'm going to show you to these producers, like, who is this? Yeah, I'm literally going to break the wall and look at the camera, like, so... Yeah. This... Is, yeah. Are y'all serious with this? Yeah. <laughs> like, yep. Yep. I'm not getting any you know? further. I'm not. I'm not going any mm-hmm. further. Like I'm nope. not y'all doing this. Take a fool of me on TV. Yeah. Yep. see the mm-hmm. setup. What is yep. this? I'm not. Yep. Nope. Mm-hmm. What's an oldest shit? I'm not continuing with this. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Um. So that's that's them. Now mm-hmm. Haley and the '80s nerd Jacob. They oh also are god. meeting to get married. <laughs> um. <laughs> She's all done up. She's throwing back Moses. Mm-hmm. Um, Haley, if you remember, she's been single seven years. She mm-hmm. is a bit picky, as she says. She has a tendency to write people off before giving them a chance. Yeah. Um, but she and... says, like, things that are, I don't know, like, if I'm 28 living in Atlanta doing my thing and you are living with your parents and you five, six, I feel like that's a reason not to date you. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I, think, um, I don't feel like that's too picky. picky. That's... <laughs> yeah, I think that's fine. I don't. Yeah, but whatever. She says there's a reason. So fine. She's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, what we know about her is she, as she says, she wants someone to live a fast paced life, travel. <laughs> like she, that's what she, she's a world traveler. She wants someone who's going to be out here <sighs> doing adventures, oh living life. And um, she's been single seven years. So she's been very much in that mindset. And she's worried about someone fitting into that. Mm-hmm. She needs someone who wants the same things that she wants, like ASAP. Right, she, right. She's been in this mindset of like this. She's set in her ways already. So right. Just knowing that alone, we know that Jacob is just not a match. It's not <laughs> her. It, yep. Nope. It's just not. Mm-hmm. Her. Um. Now Jacob, he's over with his friends, oh and what he's They're looking so for is someone boring. who will just share his interests. Yeah. That's his big thing. Which is so not. For... Here's the thing. Here's the thing with guys like Jacob. <laughs> He is pushing everybody away with his nerdiness. And that's why his nerdiness is so incredibly specific. He is Mm. not just looking for somebody who's like a little nerdy, who's into computer programming, who's into this, who's into that. He is looking for somebody who's into the specific shit that he's into so that he can push Mm -hmm. everybody away because he feels like nobody is good enough for him. 
Yeah. Because he's a narcissistic yeah. asshole, really, is what he is. <laughs> and he doesn't, he wants to like blame it on the nerd when mm-hmm. really you want to seem as unattractive as possible. Yeah. Yeah. What it's a definitely a self sabotage. And, Absolutely. And his, his weirdness, his nerddom is like so, so specific mm-hmm. that you're already cr- making your pool of women so small. So small. Mm-hmm. who's into 80s shit like i don't <laughs> and why does she have to be into that i don't understand why into that yeah. i am into drag race and makeup tutorials you think i'm finding some nigga who's into that no <laughs> like <laughs> why i don't understand why they have to be into the same things yeah. you're into that's you not into. a requirement and he he makes it so it's so much at the forefront of who he is yes it's like right in your face you have mm-hmm. to as a woman just like buy into it e- yeah. e- like immediately right. because it is so a part of him right right but yeah i think you're right it's like very much a self-sabotage type of thing he is the just worst. trying to keep everybody at bay mm-hmm. um his one of his friends gets my invite to the cookout oh, fantastic. <laughs> he asks his friends like do you guys have any like concerns or anything that i should think about his friend immediately said too much 80s too much inside jokes like tone it down like he he didn't mince his words at all he just said i'm gonna tell you right now before you get on this down this aisle it's too much yeah yeah (laughs) bring it back like stop with this so he heads to the altar Mm -hmm. um weird very weird confessional he he reveals that he's attracted to a woman with a bigger nose very (laughs) again specificity that's getting weird very interesting <laughs> like what a woman with a large nose all right Mm-mm. um so yeah he uh, Haley, she's you know swinging back a couple more swigs of alcohol before she goes down the aisle yeah and they meet up and he is just very stiff mm-hmm. she's being her warm bubbly self mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. she's just kind of getting stonewalled he's like so yeah. nervous and just like stiff and awkward and yeah yeah um just yeah weird mm. um we learned i mean during the officiant same things we've known about him there's not much to him he's a meat he, he no. loves eating meat yeah he's a nerd he loves he his re- dogs he, he loves rebuilt computers. his house like, yeah rebuilt his house like all the mm-hmm. stuff the officiant was saying were the same things that we know and the only things yeah. that we know about him. yeah mm-hmm. um and yeah i don't know she Haley. um what am I saying here? Yeah, her her vows are kind of just the same thing. Promise to be open and honest, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, blah. Ex- same, yeah, same shit. Same thing. They exchange rings, have a little awkward kiss. Um, Ugh, yeah, and yeah, <laughs> heading into their chat and, you know, have drinks. Mm-hmm. She says she's very curious about this 80s thing because it's such a prominent part of his mm-hmm. friends his, and family want uh-huh. you to know. Yep, yep. Um, and hey, I feel so bad for Haley because immediately when they do the toast and mm-hmm. it's just the two of them, she, he's very socially awkward and she, very. it's not, she's realizing now it's not just nerves. It wasn't just yeah. nerves at the altar. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. it's this him. is how he is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, you can see her kind of like smiling through it, but I can see behind her eyes. She's like, oh, yeah. fuck, this is just how he is. <laughs> and he's <laughs> awkward with no personality on top of being awkward. No, yeah. Even when you chip past the awkward, mm-hmm. ain't nothing there, girl. It, ain't, it ain't nothing. Much. <laughs> there ain't much at all. Oof. Um, but yeah, he's just talking about the same shit. He has a job mm-hmm. in IT. He eats steak and <laughs> eggs. That's all he eats is steak and eggs. Oh, um, God. Like, how mm-hmm. can you make yourself more boring? Eat the same boring, meal boring. three times a day. <laughs> Like, God, he just leans into oh, it. God, this is the worst. Um, and then, yeah, she's a big traveler, big into skydiving. Mm-hmm. He reveals he's a bit of a hermit. So already we're seeing just like lifestyle mismatch. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's not lost on Haley. She sees yeah. it. She's like, okay, all right, great. Yep. Um, now, time for wedding photos. Um, back to Paige and Chris. Mm-hmm. Chris's dad is talking to Chris about... Page's shape. Page's shape. Shape. This is so disgusting. And you can see this apple didn't even fall from the tree. Mm -hmm. These apples are grown from the same branch. Okay. Yeah. They share in a leaf. They are the same. 
same. Oh my you God. See exactly where he comes from. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, this was actually my ill setup moment. Congratulations. You played yourself. This moment. Oof. Yeah. The daddy revealing himself. Because you see. Oh. I mean, like the producers, they saw Chris mm -hmm. was, you know, allegedly a Christian. Oh, we have Paige, who's a Christian too. Uh -huh. Let's match them right. up together. Let's match them together. They set her up with somebody with this terrible ass daddy who also mm -hmm. was basing himself in Christianity, this trifling mm -hmm. preacher who was there when the dad was talking about the nice shape. He was right there laughing about it. Yep. That trifling ass pastor. And it's like they just set them up. Pastor Cal is one of the experts. Pastor Cal. Yo, Pastor Cal, you, you saw are. all of this and still set this woman up. Still mm. set this young Christian lady up. I don't know what you have to do in the next coming years of your life to make up for this one, but you yeah. got to make up for this one. This is really bad. Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is real bad, Pastor Chris. Oh Pastor Carl. God. What's his name? Cal? Cal. Pastor Cal. Cal. Calvin. Pastor Calvin. <sighs> Um, God. so yeah it's just so they over there having that talk and then Paige mm -hmm. is with her friends and she she already is seeing signs she says to yeah. them she's mm -hmm. like I'm worried about our mm -hmm. connection when he was doing his vows he was staring at the paper the whole time like mm -hmm. she already is kind of she knows like she knows she knows yeah. he's you know kind of disconnecting already but her mm -hmm. friends you know they're nice they're trying to reassure her like girl it's okay right. like yeah. just trying to you know talk her off the ledge um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she does say something to her. She said, I wish she would look at me a bit more. I don't feel yeah. connected. I wish she would look at me. Oh. Oof, terrible. Oh. Um, now, Haley and Jacob, a producer asks her, what's your favorite thing about your husband so far? And she kind of just like looks at the camera like, uh, I don't know. Damn, she didn't have she an answer. She can't even find one redeeming quality that they do. <laughs> <laughs> Not one. She can't even say he's cute. She just right. said, yeah. I don't I don't know. Hey guys, that's a little taste of this week's episode. If you want to hear the full recap, head on over to patreon.com slash two black girls, one rose and sign up to get weekly recaps and other bachelor content from us. See, See you next week. week.